Hello. Welcome to the complete PlayStation series episode on 2002 FIFA World Cup. This game is not 2002 FIFA World Cup. It's Personal Nightmare on the Amiga, and it's pretty good. I'd rather be playing this and talking about it than 2002 FIFA World Cup. This game is Beethoven the Ultimate Canine Caper on Super Nintendo. It's also not 2002 FIFA World Cup, but I'd also rather be playing and talking about this. The thing is, there are many people that enjoy playing annualized sports titles every year, and that's totally fine. I assume that they enjoy playing as their favorite celebrity athletes from each season, and perhaps they might get a lot of satisfaction out of customizing their fantasy team with deeply integrated player stats, but it's no secret that there are also many of us that don't enjoy these types of games. The type of sports games that appeal to me are the ones that play style and fun ahead of realistic simulation. Games like Golf Story, NFL Blitz, NBA Jam, Tecmo Super Bowl, Super Punch-Out, Kirby's Dream Course, some of the Mario Golf games developed by Camelot, 98 Koshin, Mario Tennis 64, these are all titles that I feel make their respective sports more approachable for a complete dweeb like me. I take one glance at the endless ocean of annualized, acronymic sports titles that fill the value bin and immediately feel that dreaded sense of childhood boredom. You know, the kind you feel when your parent drags you to do errands with them and you find yourself standing around in a lawnmower repair shop that smells like gasoline while your dad and some dude with holes in his shirt grunt at each other in a different language. It's torture. Believe me, I, I wish I was more excited about these type of games. With the current state of video game collecting, they're the only ones left on thrift store shelves, aside from like, Wii shovelware. They sit around, sad and hopeless, wondering if they'll ever be adopted. I'd love to rescue them. I really would, but I can't be bothered to care. The main problem here is, I did a stupid thing, and I signed myself up to review every PlayStation 1 game, alphanumerically, regardless of region. And that's just what I intend on doing. FIFAs, Maddens, NCAAs, NBAs, NHLs, MLBs, and all. That being said, given my limited understanding of each sport and game series, I don't really feel that I'm qualified to give deep analysis of them, let alone the fact that going into each of them and dissecting the unremarkable nuances that might slightly differentiate each yearly release would just create a dull video, in my opinion. So here's my plan. I'm gonna get in and get out. I'm going to briefly tell you about the developer, and then I'm just going to give a very quick presentation of my experience. Perhaps calling it a review isn't accurate here, but I'm doing my best. I'm setting all of this up for you because this is just how I intend to handle all of the rest of these types of games in the series, and I won't bring it up again. So let's get started. 2002 FIFA World Cup was released in 2002 for PlayStation, GameCube, Windows, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. It's the second title in EA's FIFA World Cup series, following World Cup 98, and it was based on the real-world 2002 FIFA World Cup, which took place in both South Korea and Japan in June of that year. Multiple companies are credited with developing the various ports of the game, but it's both EA Canada and Creations that were behind the PlayStation port. I don't think it's necessary for me to dive into EA, as we all know who they are, and the sooner we move on, the better. However, I will say that this specific branch, EA Canada, now known as EA Vancouver, started as Distinctive Software Incorporated, or DSI, in 1983, which was a company that ported arcade and console games to home computers throughout the 80s until they were acquired by EA in 1991. EA Vancouver is apparently the oldest and largest branch of EA, and they boast the world's biggest video game test operation. A quick glance at their games developed looks like this. Creations was founded originally as Software Creations in 1985 Manchester, England. They started out doing budget ports of popular games to the Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum, among others, before they came into the good graces of Nintendo and began developing a whole slew of games that are fairly well known. So many, in fact, that I'm just going to have them scroll across the screen while I detail the more interesting bits of Software Creations. Apparently, the relationship with Nintendo started when Software Creations co-founder, Mike Webb, was able to successfully reverse engineer an NES in 1987, which earned the company a development contract. After Software Creations was placed on the shortlist for Nintendo's quote-unquote Dream Team, which was a collection of studios brought together to design tools and games for the upcoming Nintendo 64, they were tasked with developing sound tools for the Nintendo 64 dev kit. 
Additionally, between 1995 and 1999, this company worked on a game inspired by Mario Paint called Creator that would end up becoming the Japan-exclusive sequel to Mario Paint, Mario Artist Paint Studio, for the also Japan-exclusive Nintendo 64 DD. That's right, a British studio made this game, and I had no idea of that before. In 2002, they developed four games, including 2002 FIFA World Cup, under the name Creations, and later that same year they were acquired by Acclaim. Their name was changed to Acclaim Studios Manchester, and they developed Gladiator, Sword of Vengeance, and All-Star Baseball 2004 on Game Boy Advance. In 2004, Acclaim filed for bankruptcy and subsequently closed Acclaim Studios Manchester down. This caused the cancellation of two games being worked on by the company. Interview with the Maid Man, which did end up getting picked up by another studio and released as Maid Man Confessions of the Family Blood, and a sequel to ATV Quad Power Racing 2, which would have the same name, but, you know, with a 3 instead of a 2. Okay, let's play this game. EA Sports. It's in the game. So the orchestra you saw in the opening there is the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra, which makes sense since EA Canada did this game, based in Vancouver. Uh, there you have the mascots, which... <laughs> whatever those things are, I, I don't know. Jelly bear guys, jester things. Um, and when I went to the options here, it looks like you can turn fatigue on the players on and off. You can set it to day or night which I think was neat. You can choose the stadium. And in team management, um, there's a lot going on here. Uh, definitely over my head, uh, but for those of you that might understand this more, it, it definitely gets deep. Yes, yeah, so you have all the players, their positions, um, and at the bottom of the screen, you can see their different stats. This, uh, <laughs> again, over my head, obviously something to do with the the setup of your players on the field. So I chose a regular match rather than the like season. And um, I like that they had the ranking of each team displayed on the left there because I went ahead and chose the number one ranked team and I made my opponent the last ranked team. France is my team. And then I think I found the 42nd ranked team yeah, uh, Senegal. Um, yes, yeah, so you can use two uh, multi-taps here. So you could have eight people playing the game, um, and I imagine that would be pretty fun. I, I guess in a game like this, it would make sense because the screen wouldn't need to be split. Um, so everyone can kind of see their players on screen at once. Yep, circles conservative tackle, X is switch player, uh, square is aggressive tackle, and triangle is sprint. And that is while you're defending, while you're... On offense, um, circle is kick towards the goal. X and square are um, uh, to pass. Um, and so I noticed while defending, X is going to uh, select the player that is closest to the ball. There's a light breeze, so it shouldn't be too hot for the players. We're underway then. And then 
Yeah, it took me a little bit to get used to it. Um, I definitely found that uh, using the aggressive tackle square usually uh, resulted in a foul. Um, there's my totally not me doing it, the AI goalie doing a good job, but then I I kicked it. Sometimes an early taste like that really. Yeah, and in the middle of the game, you can change the difficulty, which that's strange. Zidane. Still kind of getting my bearings. Quality long ball forward. And you have a little power meter that comes up when you kick it. Um, and that actually really does make a big difference because um, there are many times, even just passing, that I would, like, kick it way... Uh, way further than I needed to um, and you know no one would be there you kind of have to be careful when you pass because um, I think that the game requires a little more accuracy on the players part than I was expecting um, at first it I just kind of assumed that it would like auto target but it, it really didn't do that penalty says the referee and they can't really argue there blatant tackle from behind well I have to say that's only just inside the box John it might only be 12 yards out, but this... Yeah. Oh, he stopped. <laughs> uh, I just mashed buttons for that. The keeper is anticipating every little move they make. And yeah, I want to highlight uh, the, the announcers are great, too. I really particularly love the Scottish dude. They're, they're, they're pretty good. Cleared from the box. Henri. Yeah, so... <laughs> Anytime I tried to kick it from far away, they made fun of me, which was great. And he finds the ball at his feet. Vieira. Read that well. And then, yep, there you can see I got a foul because I was using the aggressive kick. Not a fair one, says the referee. Free kick awarded. And uh, there was playing as Zidane for a second there. You know, Final Fantasy IX, right? Yes, good catch. Plenty of style there too, John. So um, it took me, like, I definitely got several fouls using the aggressive tackle, and eventually I learned it's best to use the um, conservative tackle circle. The only issue with that, um, and I ran into this a lot, is that when you're mashing circle to try to steal the ball from the other player, um, a lot of times you end up hitting circle like after you've gotten the ball and then it results in you kicking the ball towards the goal and usually way far way further out than you should be doing that um, and then of course the announcer makes fun of me every time I do that but you'll maybe we'll see if we can get to a part here where that happens but it happens a lot I'll, I'll steal the ball and then as soon as I steal it I accidentally kick it towards the goal passed forward so that was one of the times the aggressive t uh, tackle actually worked. So the anthem that was written for the 2002 uh, FIFA World Cup that year was by Vangelis. How do you say? It? How do you say it? hold on? Let me see this. Vangelis. Vangelis. Uh, and uh, so it was used in this game as well. And unfortunately, he passed away recently. <laughs> So yeah, there I did a really poor job of defense, and all their players just came in. So yeah, there as, as you can see, it's like a pretty quick match. It's already halfway through. Let's get ready to watch the second half. Here we go. I do like the um, the audience in the background. I like. I think the imagery is great. Granted, this was 2002, you know, so it was late PS1 life. Um, but regardless, I, I still I still like it. Um, kind of curious to see what the graphics are like in the other versions. Kind of. Mildly. Not really. And that's easy for the keeper. Play the way then by the keeper. Yeah, see, there, there, that's... 
that was one of the moments where I was like mashing circle and then I kicked it towards the goal. And I'll do it a lot. Yep. See. Nice header. <laughs> I keep doing it. Henri. And I was, I was I actually actually went for it there. Well, not bad, not bad for this first day. So um, with with these two again, it's it's something where you actually like the game. I wasn't sure at first, but the game actually does require you to be accurate. It's a, like even though you have the different like uh, the square X and circle that you could choose, you still have to um, like aim properly. And that's going to be a goal. That was a bad shot. Yeah, and if I knew more about um, soccer, football, um, I, I really would be able to give you all more insight here, but I just don't. I I think it's fun. You know, I played it when I was a kid. I did, uh, when I was a kid, I played, for, for the YMCA, I played soccer, Little League soccer. Um, I did a couple of seasons of that, but I don't remember anything about it, and I don't think I paid attention when I was a kid. Or is he stupid? <laughs> I'll let you decide that one. But he was never going to score from there. No trouble for the keeper. And the goalkeeper clears the ball. <laughs> yeah, and so, like, right here I'm mashing X to try to... It, it, it really, uh, there is a bit of a, like, I, would, I don't want to say learning curve, but, like, you do have to kind of get used to the buttons for a second, and it does require quick thinking. Like, I've played very few actual soccer, there, there I go doing it again. I've played very few actual um, football for, you know, soccer games in my life, but, like, uh, this one seems like it's well done. Like, I, I feel like this is a good one. Although I feel like at a certain point, somewhere around this generation of consoles, like it really was hard to mess up. I feel like there was a lot of staples that had been set. Trezeguet. Like past the 16-bit era, you know. Back heel. The shot blocked. Oh. Blocks the shot. Danger averted. And then, of course, probably like a downfall eventually would just be like all the ones now that incorporate a lot of. Um, you know, loot or like pay to play kind of mechanics. Played up the part by the keeper. Nicely done with the volley. Uh, yay, there it is. All right. And that was, that's, that's the one goal I get in the game. <laughs> I like their animations. It's great. <laughs> you really got hold of that. And that was, that was pretty cool, right? I did that. Me, me. I did that. I'm a big boy. I'm a big soccer boy. Just a goal in it here, then, as we approach full time. Yeah. So, yeah. Circle every time. Circle for life. But then that happens. So it's like you really, really have to, like, pay attention. Like, you... I, I wish that... Circle wasn't shoot. I, I do. I Or at least it wasn't the same button as that, like, conservative steal. I wish it was... Uh, I think that's the game. Is that the game? Finish up 1-0. Well, I think we've nicked it, John. It's a great feeling to win in the last few minutes of a game. As ever, you've been a font of knowledge, Andy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's the game. Okay. All right. Well, I, I won the game. Um, I told you that this was going to be casual. Obviously, it's unscripted. I'm sorry if I'm not super interesting uh, speaking unscripted here. But... I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna try going forward with sports games like this. Um, you know, just like a brief, like setup, and then just play a casual game and just kind of describe my experience because I really don't know how else to approach this, and I really don't know enough about it. So thank you so much to all of my Patreon friends. Um, I really really appreciate you all. Um, and for those of you that actually stuck around and watched this, thank you so much. Um, and yeah, have a have a good one. Don't forget to be nice to people!